Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Premium Picks. Today, we are going to break down UFC fight night garbage versus garbage. Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, prospect versus pro. I mean, uh, Hibas versus Nama Yunus. Very strange card. Definitely not a great one. But you know what? There are a few spots we're going to find to make some money anyways. So let's break down this card and let's get into it. First fight of the night, we got heavyweights. We have got Muhammad Usman versus Mick Parkin. Uh, Usman, fresh off the... Who did he fight last? Was his last fight? Uh, he won. He rebounded after his loss to... Uh... No, he's Shit. Not I in a row. Sorry, guys. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah, the win off Jake Collier and uh, beat Junior Taffa in a fight where Taffa gassed horribly. Uh, all right. So, yeah he's, yeah, he's won a few in a row. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I thought he was coming off a loss a few fights ago. Either way, I don't like him in this fight. He is a guy who's a, sh a brick shit house. He's a strong, powerful guy. Not technical at all. Wrestling's really not that good. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to utilize grappling here. And I think he's going to be at the end of Mick Parkin's job all night long. I think Mick Parkin's more technical fighter. Parkin's kind of boring. He's not like some big knockout guy by any means at all. I, I just think he's going to outpoint him over three rounds. Um, and I don't think he's going to get chinned. So as long as Parkin doesn't get chinned, I think he's going to be ahead the whole fight. He's going to be a step faster, a step ahead, more technical guy. I actually like Parkin in this spot. What do you think? I agree. Uh, Usman, he won those three in a row, like you said, but all three are like different ways. How can he knocks him out with a lucky punch after, like, I say lucky after losing probably the first round. Tafa won the first round off of him, in my opinion, and then a takedown in each other round, and he secures both rounds. Fine. Good win, I guess. Collier was close. I guess the one takedown he had in that fight is probably what swayed the judges, but uh, otherwise, like, he fought a close fight with Jay Collier. Now, Mick Parkin showed a pretty good ground game in that Dana White Contender Series fight. Um, he uh, he rear naked choked that guy. And uh, his fight against Pogues, he really controlled the fight. He outstruck him 95 to 36, man. He really had the distance managed really well. So that last fight with Machado, I, I don't know. He, his striking looked a little off. But he, you know what? It's kind of cool that he can go to a ground game. He's well-rounded in the fact that he went to the ground game. Still pulled off a win. He looked really tired. I, I don't know if something was going on that fight or what it was. But you know what? He got it out of win. And, you know, I I just I don't think Usman can take down Parkin. And vice versa. I'm not sure if Usman can stop Parkin from taking him down either. Because, I don't know, Usman seems a little have to have more holes in his game. But uh, actually, I like this fight to get extended. And I like uh, Parkin to win by decision. Two heavyweights that don't push a heavy pace, right? So, I agree 100%. Uh, Parkin and over Parkin decision, like them both for sure. I think it's going to look a lot like the Pokes fight, yep. actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, moving on, we've got undefeated versus undefeated Igor Severino versus Andre Lima. 15 fights, 13 finishes. They're they're both exciting fighters, um, but they're both not a whole lot of tape. They're both uh, green as hell. Um, I think Lima is the more technical striker, but Igor is still a, a dangerous, dangerous guy. So nothing here would shock me. Um, I, I just, I don't like betting on newcomers. I don't like betting on prospects. The line is a little bit wide, honestly, because I could see either of them finishing each other. So, I mean, I think I like, the fight to finish but you know sometimes with these new guys they both come in like this and you know they don't i, I don't know it's just there's no bet that's sticking out to me i will say lima should win the fight because i think that he can stuff the takedowns and be the better striker on the feet um but hey igor's a good striker he's still a dangerous fighter um i i just think andre's lima's a bit more technical so i'm going to take lima by being the better striker and keeping it on the feet but it's not a bet for me what do you think well, the Silva there, Igor, is aggressive, but he's tactical if you watch that Dana White Contender Series. He has good hands. He mixes in the grappling, too, so I, I kind of like that. But he was uh, he's also ultra-aggressive when he has to be, like in the second round of that fight. If the striking is close, he uses his grappling. So that's to even the field out. Now, Igor can come out aggressive, and he has a good chin. I've seen him get hit in the Dana White Contender Series and just, you know, truck right through it. He has good cardio. He has good power. Now, Lima, though, I think he he's a more powerful striker because he sits down on his punches. Uh, he goes through the body a lot. Um, he's not as aggressive as De Silva. I watched him that day in a white contender series fight, but he's very good technically, and he likes to stay at range. Now, that guy he was fighting, Nima or Megum or whatever his name was, he wasn't pushing a pace either. So, De Lima was fighting the fight that he needed to beat that guy with. So, I feel like De Silva, Igor here, is going to push a pace on him. 
And you could say, oh, yeah, well, Delima's low volume. But was he only low volume because the other guy wasn't coming forward or wasn't pushing any sort of pace? That's not going to happen here. Like, uh, De Silva's going to push a pace on De Lima. To, or Lima, sorry. He's going to push that pace. And Lima, I feel like, is the better technical striker. But the other guy, he's no slouch. The odds are wide. But Lima has de- decent scrambles, good get-ups. I've seen him actually use the wrestling himself. So, you know, this is pretty close, man. I, I don't have a bet here. I'm I'm siding with Lima because he looks like the better overall striker. He's less wild. He has more skill. He shows, you know, that kind of stuff. But fuck, if the other guy wins, it's, it's not going to surprise the shit out of me. No, there's a lot of fights here where it could go either way, man. When you got prospect versus prospect, not a whole lot of tape to watch. Like, I've tried to watch everybody here, and I can only find one or two fights each. So I'm I'm going off very little footage. I, I just got to go with what I'm seeing and what and what I think here. That, that's that's all I can do. <laughs> Next fight of the night, we got Montserrat Rondon versus Daria Zalenskiakova. I don't know, however you want to pronounce her name. Regardless, this is a classic striker versus grappler. Montserrat wants to get this down right away. Daria has been finished on the ground before. That's how she lost. She likes to strike. She's a power striker. She's an aggressive striker. She doesn't shy away from from a fist fight. Like she, that's what she wants. She wants a firefight. But Montserrat is exactly the opposite. She will shoot. She is pretty smart. She's not going to get sucked into that. She's going to look to take her down. Um, like she's a live dog here. If she gets the takedown early, this might be a live bet. Like if she shoots really qu- like preload that bet. If she shoots the takedown and gets it right away in that first round, boop, I'm hitting it. I'd be taking the dog on Montserrat. If she can't get the takedown early, then she's going to get lit up. Um, I don't know. I, I got to see Daria perform at the UFC before I can bet on her. Like, I would love to see Daria get a knockout here. I, I, I'm rooting for the striker over the boring grappler. But just based off how she's lost and based on this stylistic matchup, Montserrat can take her down and... I know that she's at least going to try. So this might be a, like I said, preload that bet and get ready to hit it and see if she lands that first takedown, smash it. If she doesn't land the first takedown, pass it. I don't know. That's just how I see it. What do you think? I got a pretty big take on this one. So it's your typical grappler versus striker fight. But see, like Montserrat, she doesn't check kicks, like low kicks in her fight against Tamara Spidal. She didn't check the kick. She reached like reaching down, trying to grab the kick, right? And uh, Daria doesn't throw as many kicks. She throws a lot of knees from the clinch sort of thing, but like she's not low kicking like a lot. So she leaves that opening for an overhand quite easily. And Daria throws it overhand quite easily. Yo, she's going to throw a low kick, run down, try to get the low kick and then get countered. Like that's huge. And like her striking defense needs a lot of work, Montserrat. And she struck a lot with Tamara. She didn't really push those takedowns. It was Tamara Vidal pushing the takedown in that fight, right? Was she scared of Vidal's ground game? Maybe. But I don't know. She didn't push it enough for me to, like, you know, and not, not Daria, she's strong. She doesn't really, uh, like, get pushed around. So her loss was to Melissa Dixon. And if you watch her, watch her fight against Melissa Dixon, she was eating Melissa Dixon up on the feet, beating the shit out of her. And then she get up in the clinch. And Dixon's strong. Montserrat isn't strong like Dixon, man. Yo, Dixon's a thick girl. She has she's strong. And that takedown she got on Daria, it was like a strength takedown. It wasn't a technical takedown. And watch all the fights that Tamaris Vidal, when I, that fight against Tamaris Vidal, those were caught kicks, off balance takedowns. I, no, I don't see that happening. Like, and then the takedown that Dixon got, she did beat her up. Daria looked kind of lost on the ground, but like Montserrat doesn't show that kind of strength. Yo, I man, Dix, Dixon's a dog, man, with a lot of strength. Montserrat looks kind of soft soft kind of weak so yeah i i think this is daria shrugging off the takedowns not 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 getting her kicks and just like on the feet i think it's a fucking it's a wash oh uh, on the feet she smokes her and, and i hope to god that you are right like like i said i want to root for the striker i just think this is i'm waiting to see how the first takedown goes <laughs> i just don't see the strength i don't see the strength in monster i don't see the powerful wrestling yeah the grappling's there but if you can't get the grab, if you can't get the girl down, and Daria's strong on the feet. She's thick, man. Yo, and she's strong. This that's I think it's a strength thing. I really do. <laughs> she's thick, man. She's thick. <laughs> yeah, she's strong. It's just I think I think she I just I just think it's a strength thing. I really do. Hey, I hope you're right. I like it. I'm personally gonna have it preloaded and wait to see the takedown. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
All right, next fight of the night, we got Steven Ewan versus Jarno Ahrens. Uh, Ahrens, mostly known for durability and uh, just being a tough guy. He's almost like a, a poor man's Jeremy Stevens. I, I don't know if that's a way to kind of compare them. Like, he, he's not uh, overly technical, but he likes he likes to fist fight. He, he's, a, he's not really a technical martial artist. He, he's a fighter. He likes to fight. He's a tough guy. He's going to hang around. Not, not He's not going to shy away. Uh, and I think Steven's just the more well-rounded martial artist. I think he has more skills probably everywhere. Um, I think on the feet, maybe he's playing with fire a little bit, but I think he's still going to be okay on the feet, honestly. I think he's going to be okay anywhere. And if he gets rocked or whatever, I think he's got the grappling in the back pocket. So I just think he's the more well-rounded fighter. So I am going to choose the more well-rounded Steven Ewan to get the victory. Uh, probably some kind of over on that, because like I said, uh, Jarno is not the easiest guy to finish. What do you think? Yeah, well, Steven there, he's a pretty technical striker. Sometimes he lets his aggressive opponents uh, lead the dance on him. Uh, that's why I see a tape, but uh, that's not going to happen here. Jarno Evans, I don't feel like, is not one of those aggressive guys that, that come for a pressure-style fighter. He's not. He has a good jab. He works behind the jab. He has a good leg kick. Um, he got uh, fast hands, man, and, like, lovely technique on those hands, man. Like, if you just watch that fight against Cunningham, he did get hit, though. He did get hit a little bit too much to my liking in that Cunningham fight, but uh, I think he lacks a little bit of that finishing power. Uh, and he, he gets a lot of his finishes by uh, just the accuracy of his punches, right? So against Jarno Evans, like, I, I just I, I don't see him finishing him. I do see a decision coming. Um, Aaron's, he's, he's, he's a little low volume, buddy. <laughs> if you ask me, 50 strikes in two fights in the UFC, the that's that's kind of sucky, man. I don't want to call this guy like a fraud or anything like that because he is tough as hell. He likes to use his low kicks. He has good, decent striking, but doesn't throw enough, man. Like he, when he does throw, he looks okay. He doesn't look bad. He looks okay. Um, he throws with bad intentions. He does like overextend, and that's when Nguyen is going to just beat him to the punch, man. I feel like this is just an out volume, beat him to the punch. The better striker is going to win. Someone's going to be faster to the punch. That's Steven Nguyen. Someone's going to be out volume the other guy. That's Steven Nguyen. Um, not necessarily better per se, but like you said, there is also a little wrestling in the back pocket. I don't think it's going to happen in this fight, to be honest with you. I don't think this is just going to be a kickboxing match with one guy throwing two times two to one or three to one on the other guy. So Steven Nguyen by decision. All right. I like it. Moving on. We got Miles Johns versus Cody Gibson. This fight I keep going back and forth on, to be honest. Like, I truly could see either guy win this fight. Like, I think Miles Johns, at his best, is a better fighter than Cody Gibson. I truly do. Uh, but sometimes he wrestles, sometimes he strikes. I, I, I don't know what I don't know what I'm gonna get from him. Uh, I thought he looked pretty good last fight, to be honest. And Cody Gibson is coming off a decision loss to Brad Katona, who won the Ultimate Fighter. And Brad Katona decisions everyone, so there's not really any shame in that by any means. So I think if this is on the feet, it could be a close fight. Um, I think all the overs are live, honestly. Uh, and I could see it going. I just, I don't know. Miles John's so inconsistent to me, but I do think he's the better fighter. I do think he's better. So I don't know. He either gets decisioned or I, I like all the overs. here. I like all the overs. I don't love any of the bets. What's the line? The line is, uh, I think it's like plus one thirty for Gibson, and then minus one twenty five for uh, Miles Johns. That's okay, I thought I thought uh, I thought Gibson was the favorite, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I think it's a close fight. I think it's going to go long, uh, and and it wouldn't shock me if either guy won a decision. To be honest, what do you think? Well, Miles, he's a powerful striker with the, like he has a wrestling base. That's his original thing, but you know he's kind of low volume at times, and he tries to uh, not wrestle as much as I'd like him to wrestle because. You know, it keeps he keeps the fight closer than it actually should be. You know what I mean? It's, it's Miles' fault these fights are closer. He could be well ahead. And like you said, he's such a good fighter, a good, well-rounded fighter, that he should be pushing a better pace. And he should also be, like, winning these fights, you know, not these decision readers. And, you know, he had a couple of KOs back in the day, but they were, like, late in the fight. So his last fight against Aguada, he showed decent grappling uh, defense in that first round because Aguada was all over him. But, you know, he still doesn't let his hands go as much as you want in a fight where I feel like he's outmatched Arguetta on the feet. You know what I mean? 
much better striker than Dan Arguera. Uh, he might not be the better grappler, but he's just as good of a wrestler uh, in per se. But uh, yeah, he let he let Arguera, you know, control him in that first round, and he did come out with a win because he had more durability. You know, Arguera really you went hard in that round, and you know Miles Johnson took over. He has the true equalizer in the power, right? So. His opponent, Cody Gibson, you know, never been knocked out, though. Never been knocked out. So what's going to do? Like you said, these overs are really live. This is probably going to decision. If you watch Gibson in that fight against Katoni, he was pressuring him in his face the whole time. He'll eat one to he'll eat one to get close. He might be the issue, but, you know, he never not, got knocked out. So I'm going to say, man, got never KO'd. He has a decent chin. He's shown a decent chin. He has a good pressure fighter. He doesn't slow down. Not It slows down a tiny bit near the end, but, like, when you're pushing a 164 strike pace, you're going to slow down a bit. I don't care who the hell you are, right? So I think the volume, if he doesn't get knocked out, I think he out volumes Miles Johns in a decision. Like, I call me crazy. But yeah, man, I think Cody Gibbs and by decision is probably my pick here because the volume, if he, if he fights the same fight against uh, Johns as he did against Katona, he's going to out volume him three to one. I, I, Miles just doesn't throw. Yeah, I, I think Miles Johns can win if by being a stronger athlete if he fucking wrestles. But if he doesn't, he's going to get outpointed. For sure. That's my take on it, too. That's what I think. Yeah, me too. All right. Moving on, we've got Ricardo Ramos, 16 and 5, versus Julian Arosa, 28 and 11. He's been pretty inactive. I guess he's coming back now. Uh, I am seeing a lot of people going on the Julian Arosa side, and I'm not sure why. Um, I don't really get it, personally. Maybe I'm a Julian Arosa hater, but I don't think he's very good. Uh, maybe the layoff's done him good. Maybe his chin needed to recover. I don't know. I mean, I, I, maybe he comes back looking fantastic, but I don't trust him one bit. I think he's quite finishable. I think Ricardo Ramos is a finisher. Uh, Ricardo Ramos can be beat. He can be... Uh, out bullied and, and and kind of out pressured but i think ricardo ramos has the more zip on his strikes and i think he's a good quick opportunistic uh slap on a sub guy as well i, I think ricardo ramos is going to finish julian arosa personally and i see a lot of other videos and, and the forums talking a lot of people are on the arosa side hey maybe maybe i'm maybe i'm way off but i think arosa gets finished here personally uh what do you think i can't trust julian arosa that's one and I have my issues with Ricardo Ramos. But Narosa always does bring it. But the problem has always been his durability. KO'd six times in featherweight. Bro, that's a big deal. That's Matt Schnell territory, bud. That's crazy. That's crazy. The amount of times a featherweight's getting knocked the fuck out. It's just nuts. All things aside, these guys are close, though. This is a close fight. Uh, this is way closer than the odds say. That's a close fight, man. Like, Arosa's a good striker, and I would say Ramos lacks a little bit in the strikes. You know, he's not a great striker, but he is a moment winner, right? So that moment can come at any time with Julian Arosa. Uh, how many times has Ricardo Ramos pulled a spinning back elbow or something stupid out of his repertoire, which is in his repertoire, and he knocks a guy out and he wins? That, that could happen here. That could definitely happen here. That's on the table. As well, like, you know, his striking defense is not the greatest. Julian Rosa likes to block punches with his face as well. Ramos is a little low volume. I think he could throw a little bit more for my liking. Uh, Ramos needs to get his wrestling involved here. I don't know how well it's going to go, but he's always a better fighter when he can get his takedowns. Um, it makes him, you know, less pressure in the cage to, like, do something on the feet. And uh, it kind of settles him down. And whenever it, those fights that he gets takedown, he wins. So I think he's good for at least one here. Um, but Julian will scramble. He's live dog, but I, I, I'm leaning Ramos. I think some moment the durability will show its ugly face again. And Ricardo Ramos will hit him with something. I don't even know what it is. I hope it's a spinning back elbow. Because he'll be like the spinning back elbow king of the UFC. <laughs> 18 spinning back elbow wins and he's got like two or three at least and that's a lot all right moving on we got trey ogden versus kurt holabau um this is actually a very fun fight i am one of the very few trey ogden fans i think he's very good i think he's very underrated i think i've made that comment many times 
Jones on here. I, I don't know if it's you or one of my other buddies. They're always like, you're crazy. He's not that good. I think he's fucking good. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's going to handle handle Kurt Holabau. Uh, but Kurt is a fun fighter too. You know what? 20 wins, 17 finishes. He does like to come forward. He, he's probably known more for a grappler, but he's a, a sloppy, slug it out guy too. I think to a detriment, he gets hit a lot. And I think that's going to be his downfall here. I think he's going to get sloppy. He's going to get hit. He's going to get rocked. And then nothing's going to shock me. Once he's that rocked, it wouldn't shock me if he gets stopped with strikes. It wouldn't shock me. I know he's a good grappler, but even a submission wouldn't shock me. I mean, I, I just think he's going to get rocked first, and then whatever happens after that happens after that. But I think he's going to eat a big shot, and that will be his demise. So I'm on the Trey Ogden side. What do you think? Yeah, Trey's your jack-of-all-trades. Uh, not really great at anything kind of guy, but uh, always good at everything, sort of. He's, uh, he's shown up and down career, though. It's uh, it's kind of weird. He gets outstruck by Jordan Levitt, but then, like, outduels, like, Daniel Zellhuber, and then, like, gets outstruck by Ignacio Bahamondes, but looks stellar against fucking Nicolas Mata. So, <laughs> I don't know. He shows decent volumes in some fights, but he gets controlled at distance, like in that Bahamondes fight. And we, it turned out that Bahamondes wasn't as good as we thought, you know, but, you know. Kurt, though, shown improved striking over the years and has a pretty good ground game. Uh, the issue is, and it always has been, he has a propensity to be taken down in his fights. Even that fight he won against, uh, who was it? Uh, Austin Hubbard. The last fight was Austin Hubbard. Still got taken down a couple times. Again, even though he won that fight, still got taken down a couple times. It was his power that Austin Hubbard couldn't eat. Uh, we know Trey Ogden's a dog, right? So Trey Ogden will eat that power shot. And then just just power through with the takedown, I think. And at least we we can be semi sure that Trey is going to actually employ a little bit of a wrestling game, uh, even if he's striking a lot, right? So look at that modified fight. So you're going to be like, oh, Trey has a low volume, but then now in that modified fight in the first round, he's like 30 strikes and had a takedown and was going for an arm triangle. Like he looked, he looks like a different. It depends on which Trey Hogden shows up that day, right? So it's so hard to tell with the guy. Um, I'm leaning to Trey. He's just going to outwork this guy. I think he just outworks him. Um, Ogden, Ogden, only thing, has been subbed three times. Not in the UFC, but those are three losses uh, out of a six, I think, uh, have been uh, by sub. And that's Kurt Holabaugh's path to victory. If you want to uh, hedge hedge a bet, would be uh, Kurt Holabaugh by submission is a good look. I don't know any odds yet, but uh, it's either Trey Ogden by decision or Kurt Holabaugh by submission. I think Ogden's actually been a lot better striker lately, personally. Like yeah, I think he's yeah, yeah. he's he's come around. <laughs> he lets some guys take the range on him, but otherwise, you know, pretty good. All right, guys, moving on to the main card. If you haven't already, please like, please subscribe. We do appreciate it. First fight of the main card. It's kind of weird. It's on the main card. We got Luis Pajalo versus Fernando Padilla. Don't really trust either of these guys. Uh, I, I don't like Padilla at all. So I'm gonna have to go with Luis here. I just think Padilla will be walked down. He'll be he'll be going backwards. I don't think he'll be throwing enough. And this is another fight where I think all the overs are live. I I think this could be a decision or an over one and a half. Uh, but it's it's a non bet for me. I don't like the fight at all. I don't really know why it's on the main card either. Honestly, uh, it's a pass. It's an over, and it's a Luis for me. What do you think? Well, Luis was an underdog in his Dana White Contender Series fight. He's, he actually showed good striker, good power. Uh, he does throw blind leg kicks, then he can be countered. I feel like that's the only place where Padilla can counter. He's used to being the hammer. He's not the nail. But, you know, Padilla in his fights isn't the nail. Uh, P P P Luis likes to um, firefights. He wants to get into a firefight. And Padilla is, uh, I think he's susceptible to getting into a firefight. Um, but Luis also in the tape, I've seen he can be taken down, but I I don't I don't see Fernando taking him down. So this is going to be a kickboxing match. Padilla, he's a tall, rangy striker, but he looks cool, calm, and collective, but too cool, calm, and collective sometimes. And then he got aggressive against uh, Julian Arosa that one time, and they stopped that one a little bit early. I was looking at that fight this morning, and they stopped that one a little early. Uh, I think Arosa might have actually not got knocked out in that fight. He was going to fight back, but. Uh, what I can say about Padilla is that he's very accurate with his punches. Uh, but if you watch that Kyle Nelson fight, his last fight, he could, could be controlled at distance. He was controlled at distance from Kyle Nelson. That's what I'm you saying. What I mean? That's crazy. And this guy, uh, Luis here, 
he wants a firefight, so he's going to walk him down. He's going to come at him. He's going to go. In the, the only way I saw that you could stop this guy is to, I think he fought this Robbie King guy, uh, is to sort of go for some takedowns. But I, I just, I don't think Padilla's IQ is right there. So, yeah, man, this is a pass or a dog or pass. Sorry, or, or you play the dog inside the distance, I think. I think he's going to finish him, to be honest with you. So I'm going with Luis. Luis is the, Luis is the dog? Luis is the dog, buddy. Eight, eight and one with seven knockouts, and he's the dog? The dog. He's a plus 130, and Padilla's a minus 160. I'm going dog on this one. I'm telling you that, man. It's definitely dog or pass because I, no. I would not be betting Padilla. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, I haven't seen anything good from him. Not that I've seen much from the newcomer, but like it's worth plus 130. I mean, it's a pass, but for me, it's Padilla or sorry, a hello. Uh, I ain't betting Padilla. Sorry, no Padilla, no play on Padilla. That's for damn sure. Yeah. All right, guys, moving on. We got Billy Quarantillo versus Yusuf Zalal. Uh, I don't even, even this fight kind of bores me, to be honest. Yusuf is a boring fighter. Uh, I didn't even know he was still in the UFC, to be honest. I feel like I haven't seen him for a while. Going back. Uh, boring guy, doesn't doesn't press the action, doesn't get in firefights. I mean, not that you have to get in firefights, but he just doesn't do anything that entertains me. I, I don't like anything about him. He's usually getting outpointed from what I see. Uh, and Billy Quarantillo, not the greatest striker, not the greatest wrestler. He's good once it gets on the ground. If he can get you down, he can do some work. He's not the greatest at getting it there. Uh, I'm not a big Billy Q fan, but I, I think he wins this fight. I, I think he wins this fight, and I think, once again, I sound like a broken record player, I think it's some kind of over. I, again, Like I think Billy over one and a half is... Probably my initial lean right now. I'm going to wait for the props tomorrow to take a closer look at it. I don't even know what the odds are here. But uh, I'm going to say Billy in some kind of over. What do you think? Billy is one, minus 163, and I think it's great, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, Billy Q, come forward striker. Likes to overwhelm his opponents. Doesn't do anything particularly well, like you said. Uh, except he pressures for his lands on accumulation of strikes. And his takedowns and whatever he does is to break his opponent. Zala was cut. He's brought back for this fight. Uh, he's a very durable guy. Doesn't get finished. So uh, he's a decent wrestler in his own right, but I don't think he's going to wrestle here. Uh, but he doesn't pressure for it. He stands back. He doesn't push the pace. He gets pushed. He's quite boring, like you said. <laughs> There's nothing else that you can say about this guy. This is the type of fight where Billy doesn't have any worry about the power coming back at him. You know, that's the thing, right? So Billy likes his stupid-ass style, and the only time he can sting him is when you get the power coming back at him. You know, pillow fisted Lou Yusuf Zalal is not knocking out Billy Q. So, what's it going to stop him from marching him down and doing his Billy Q stuff? That's basically the way I'm going to break this down. He's going to do Billy Q stuff because he's not scared of getting knocked out. Billy Q, Billy Q, probably by decision. That's going to probably make my card. I'm going to get plus money on a decision. I will hit it. I will put the parlay on Billy Q somewhere in there. So, yeah, Billy Q is a strong lean here. All right. Pretty much a prospect versus a prospect fight. Cameron Simon is coming off that loss where he got busted by uh, C Rod. Obviously, C Rod has proven to be the prospect buster. He just busted Dalgarian there last weekend. And Peyton Talbot uh, has a lot of hype around him as the, the new tough athlete kid moving up. I, I don't really know how to describe him other than he's strong, he's fast, he, he's athlete, he hits hard. He's a decent wrestler, decent striker. I just think he's strong. Now, Cameron Simon, known for being a flashy striker, lots of spinning back kicks, fun fun guy to watch. Uh, I feel like his holes are his takedown defense. I think he's still kind of like a boy who's got to fill out that, fill out and grow into a man's body, whatever you want to say. Like I, th I think he can be bullied around or, or out-muscled. I think that's the way you're going to beat him. I don't think you really... I don't think Peyton Talbot necessarily really wants to strike punch for punch with him. I mean, maybe he does, but I don't know. I think Simon might be the slightly more technical guy here. Um, but I think Peyton is the stronger guy who can grind. So even if he gets rocked a couple times, because he probably will, I think he can clinch and get the takedowns. I'm rooting for Cameron Simon. I like the kid. I just think he might get out-muscled here. What do you think? I think Talbot's a good striker, super athletic, uh, good in space, but... I've seen him get taken down numerous times. Nick Aguirre took him down in that first fight, controlled him for pretty much the first round, the entire first round. 
I mean, granted, I'll give him some uh, give him some props. He came back pretty damn strong in that second round himself. Uh, but you can tell that Nick Agree wanted no part of his striking, and uh, he was tiring out himself, right? Simon has faced the better competition. Um, the fight against Mana Martinez, he really put a good pace on him. And I've seen him do this uh, that fight against C-Rod. He got out beaten by a guy that's just at a better spot in his career. Let's, also, let's not also forget that C-Rod came in five pounds overweight and was uh, the bigger man that day, right? So let's, let's not forget this. These guys should be around the same, you know, size-ish when, when they fight. So that, that might pay dividends. But I've seen Simon dock, dock the punch and go in for the double leg. And I've seen him use his own wrestling. And I I can't think that Peyton Talbot is going to push him around like he said. I just I just don't see it. I just, I can't. A fucking sideshow Bob out there. I can't see him doing that. I just, <laughs> I just, like, I, he's, like, Simon's the better striker, I think, technically. Um, I think so. Talbot might have more power, but is that power because he has more power? Power because his hooks are always going to have more power unless a straight punch hits you right on the button, right? So Talbot yeah, always has that hook power, but I I think he's going to just... If Simon's smart, he'll wrestle a little bit and use... Wow, the... the uh, the shit he's gained in the UFC, what he's seen done to him and what he's done to other people and used against Peyton Talbot. So maybe Simon, I think, is going to take the C-Rod and then Talbot's going to take the Simon part and I, I'm going to take Simon via decision because I don't see either one of these guys finishing each other. Uh, both guys are pretty durable, to be honest with you. So uh, I'm going to say Simon derails the hype train. I hope I hope you're right. I like the kid. All right, moving on. We got Edmund Shabazian versus AJ Dobson. Shabazian is coming off of four straight losses, but in hindsight, they're they're all good fighters. Derek Brunson, uh, Jack Hermanson. Uh, I think the last one was Fluffy Hernandez, yeah. and there was another one in there too. Can't remember who it was. <laughs> And the fourth one, let me just click on this here. Oh, Imavov. You can't. Sorry. You know what? He's not coming off four losses. He lost four of his last five. He has the one win over Dalcha, no. Lujambula, whatever you say. He won that fight too. Sorry. But still, four losses in his last five. Not a good look. I think the story is always going to be the same with Ed Edmund Shabazian. Great first round fighter. Great hammer. But he gasses. He gasses and he gasses hard. And he can be taken down. He can be beat up. Uh, will AJ Dobson be the guy to do it again? I don't know. Um, I don't think AJ Dobson is a great fighter. Uh, I, I don't know. He lost to Malcolm and he lost to Petrosian. I, I just, I, I don't think he's anything. I don't think he's as good as the guys who have been beating Edmund Shabazian, but I don't know what's left of Edmund Shabazian either. Like I, I just, this is a fight that's, it just screams past to me. I expect Edmund to win the first round. Um, can AJ rob him for a round or two in the second or third? Maybe. Um, does Dobson have the wrestling to out-wrestle him for two rounds? I don't know. I, I think it's a winnable fight for Edmund. This is what he needs. And I think if he can't win this fight, it sucks to say that it's the end of the road for him. But I think it's the end of the road in the UFC for him if he doesn't win this fight. What do you think? Young still, man. It's so gross. And he used to trade with Ronda Rousey. That probably why he's probably not that good. <laughs> <laughs> he's a decent striker, very powerful when he can not have a suspect gas tank. Uh, he has pretty good takedown defense in like round one. But as his gas tank goes, uh, that's when guys are able to take him down. So Dobson does show the propensity to wrestle. But he's a way, way lower volume fucking striker than Edmund is. Uh, Edmund hasn't beat on the feet. Like, there's nothing about this. But as this fight prolongs, Edmund will fade. It's when Edmund fades. You got to watch this one. Uh, Dobson, only his two losses in his career were to Malkoon, got taken down six times. I don't see Edmund taking him down six times. And even in that Petrosian fight, he took him down three times, but got out. But Petrosian, great scrambler, got up to his feet, outstruck him 120 to whatever, right? Because he's not going to beat 120 strikes. It's like, like Edmund, I don't know, can throw 120 strikes. They're probably an 80 strike kind of guy, if if that. Um, so I don't know, man. 
if this fight gets to round two, look at what Edmund looks like. If he looks at all like he's going to fade, it's because he starts to fade, 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 then fall off a cliff. Right? So that's how he that's how he fights. So if he's starting to fade, I would lie. I have right here on my paper. Live second round bet on AJ Dobson would probably be my only play on this fight. A live second round bet. Because he probably loses first round, you get better odds and you go for it. What the hell is one plus one thirty or whatever it is now when you can get plus three hundred after he gets smashed and survives the first round, but Edmund's huffing and puffing. Don't parlay bet this. That's for damn Not chance. a damn chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the co-main event. We got Carl Williams versus Justin Taffa. Uh, I believe the whole world is going to look at uh, Carl Williams' last fight because he looked goddamn terrible. Uh, was it Chase Sherman or... or uh, Chase Sherman. Was it Sherman? Yeah, yeah. He looked terrible. <laughs> He, he he was he was looking gassed. He was looking like he was getting outclassed on the feet. It was not a good look because I had a lot of money on Williams on that fight, and I was sweating. I was sweating. So we did hit it. We we won, but it was not a good look. And like, man, it was looking like if this guy can't shoot takedowns and get them, he's not gonna. You know, he's not very good on the feet. I don't know. And Justin Taffa, good leg kicks, good power. It says he has a hundred percent takedown defense, but I mean, I don't. Who's really shot on him? I don't know. I'm still going to give Carl Williams the benefit of the doubt here. I think a ton of people are going to be fading him. I think a lot of people like the Taffa power and the fact that Williams looked so bad last fight. I have to think that he rebounds here. I have to think that he learned from that last fight. I know he's the better athlete. I know he's the more dedicated trainer. Like this, he is a professional. If you if you look at this guy's personal life, he takes this shit serious. He's a real athlete. I have to think that Carl Williams will correct it, and he's going to rebound here and look a lot better. And I have to think he's going to be able to get the takedowns. And I know this sounds stupid, but I have to think he's going to be able to finish this fight. He has to rebound. So I don't I don't know. I don't see Taffa lying down for three rounds. So I have to think Carl Williams can take him down and finish him. And maybe that's just a crazy take, and I'm going to get burned big time here. I usually do take the power in these situations, but I'm going to take Carl Williams. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I trust this guy, but I'm going to take Carl Williams. What do you think? So it's a clash of styles here, like you said. Williams is that touch-touch fighter, used the takedowns to secure wins, right? Taffa is a powerful striker with the death touch, but throws super low volume. And I'm talking super low volume. And the one fight where he was extended out was a Vandera fight, uh, Threw about 70 strikes in that one, but I think that's because Jared threw a whole shitload, right? He boasts 100% takedown defense, like you said, but every single fighter he's fought is not a wrestler. This is the first wrestler, like real legit wrestler he's ever fought. And God knows, I think Carl Williams can take him down. <laughs> I, I, I just think Carl Williams can take him down. I, I, I There's no world that I can't think that Justin Taffa is going to not get taken down here. At some point, Williams will get him down. I don't know if he's going to finish him. I have Williams by decision, Danny, sitting right here. He's never been knocked out, Carl Williams, too. I And if he can overwhelm him on the feet, if he doesn't have that death touch, and that death touch isn't hit, too. So more passive victory, more well-rounded fighter. Give me Carl Williams. He might be a little undersized here, so I think he should work in the wrestling. All right, and that brings us to our main event. We got Amanda Hibas versus the former champion, Rose Nama Yunus. Um, I think the whole world will be on the Rose side, and I don't blame them. I think breaking down this fight, you got Amanda Hibas with a slight grappling advantage, like maybe not the wrestling, but maybe just a slight jujitsu advantage. But I don't think she's going to tap Rose, and Rose is no slouch, so Ro Rose can grapple just fine. Uh, and then you striking wise, you got to give Rose the more technical striker and the more power. But I think Amanda Hibas is the more volume and she will be the one coming forward, I believe, as well. Now, Amanda Hibas got finished brutally by Macy Barber. Uh, she got finished by Marina Rodriguez. She is a little bit chinny. She's going to scare the hell out of me in pretty much every single fight. And that's why I think the whole world will be on the Rose side. But you know what? Rose can be low volume. And she can be backed up a little bit. Like, Rose should win this fight. 
Rose should win this fight, but I never know where her head's at. And I could see a world where Amanda outvolumes her. Uh, just by, I, like, I know Amanda, like, to a detriment, she'll walk forward and get herself knocked out. She will. But she'll walk forward and she will throw strikes. So I could see her winning more minutes in this fight if she can avoid the big moment. But now I'm thinking as well, fuck, it's five minutes. So she has to avoid getting knocked out for five minutes. So that now now I'm, fl I'm flip-flopping right here on the spot. Now I'm going five rounds, sorry. Five rounds, I think Rose probably will catch her, actually. Um, but I can see I can see Amanda winning more minutes of this fight. I truly can, just with walking forward and with volume, pitter-patter shots. But she's got to go five rounds without getting knocked out, and that scares me. Um, what do you think? I think Rose is the much better fighter. <laughs> but you always yeah. have to mention her headspace, right? What kind of mentality she's in. But, you know, she made a really good impression on me in that Manon Firo fight. One can even say that she won that Manon Firo fight. It was dead close. Uh, Manon, I, I was on the Manon side, and I do think Manon got it a little bit. But, you know, she outstruck her, man. Like, I'm pretty sure that the numbers say that she outstruck her, or it was damn close. So, she looked good. And we we got Manon fighting Aaron Blanchfield uh, very soon. I think it's, like, next week or the week after. So, you know, that's top of the division. So... What the fuck is Amanda Reba's fight fought, right? She has fought the Viviana Rujos and uh, the Macy Barbers and, you know, the Caitlin Chukagian is probably her best, most elite fighter that she's ever fought. And she hasn't come close to the resume that Rose has. Like, all intents and purposes, Rose is a well-rounded fighter. Honestly, Rose can take her down and sit and guard and not be scared either, right? So she's got the better wrestling. The grappling might go to Amanda, but like it's not like Rose is that far off. Um, you gotta remember, Rose took down Wiley and fucking sat in Wiley's guard, and that's Wiley Zhang, probably the pound for pound best woman fighter in the world right now, right? So Rose knocked her out. It's Rose's mentality. You'll be able to see it when you can just look at her eyes, man. Just look in a fighter's eyes. Look at when she does the weigh-ins. Look at when she's talking on the fight. Look at her media day, right? This is a this is one of those fighters where you need to see her interviews and stuff. You can really judge how much she's into this thing, right? Just from the way she's speaking. Um, she looked like she was into the Manofiro fight, and then she showed good. So I think Amanda Hibos is a category down in what she's been fighting, and uh, she should actually absolutely roll here. I wish I didn't miss the fucking take. And it's like minus 250 now. And when it was like minus 160, like last week, I should have hit that harder than anything. Man. Uh, so. Maybe stab the uh, Rose knockout as well. I mean, when Amanda loses, boy, does she lose. And like, she's been knocked out three times. Uh, I mean, five rounds here, five. Like I said, in three rounds, there's a world where she can avoid the big shot and, and win more minutes. I, I could see that, but... Five rounds, Rose should catch her at some point and, and should drop her and finish her, I think. Well, she dropped Wiley with the head kick, remember that. So, like, she does have the power and does have the technique, right? It's not always power. It's always like, a lot of the technique, right? So And, and Amanda's chinny. And Amanda's chinny. The Marina Rodriguez fight, you brought it up already. Like, you know, she survives the first barrage, but she couldn't survive the second barrage. And... um she couldn't even survive Macy just, you know, bullied bulldogging her, right? So I don't think Rose is going to bulldog her, though. Like, that's not Rose's style. She's more a stand back, fight a technical fight sort of kind of chick, right? So we'll shall see. I'm on the Rose side, though. I don't know if it's a decision or not. I probably won't even touch that and get involved with that kind of shit. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll parlay Rose. Not heavy, but I'll parlay her. Okay, guys, there you have it. Those are our initial thoughts and breakdowns for this card. Like I said, a lot of prospects, a lot of unknowns, a lot of, uh, like, a ton of, like, so little tape to judge by. I still think there are some good spots. Um, I'm not 100% sure if we could do a bet episode this week. I got a lot of personal things I got to get attend to, and he does as well. Uh, we might, might in a couple days. If not, check the comment section. We will post our favorite props and our favorite spots anyways. And, um, hey, if you guys have a spot you like or love, let us know. I'd love to hear it because I've only seen a couple fights of, of some of these fighters. So if you, if you have something and you, you're you feeling good about it, let me know. Something you disagree with, let me know. And uh, hopefully we smash Saturday and we'll get ready for the next one. Have a good one, everybody.